Hello, and we're here to talk to you today about technology in the flipped classroom. What is a flipped classroom? Well, a flipped classroom is a new form of blending learning. And when we talk about blending learning, we're talking about both online resources as well as face-to-face. -face. It is a blend of the old and the new the passive lesson plans as well as the active lesson plans. From books to podcasts, initially we always ask our students to read the section ahead, read the book ahead before they come to class. Now we're asking them to also view a podcast before they come to class. And a lot of times these podcasts consist of what we would normally cover in class, whether it be a lecture, of uh, some basic material, and it allows us to free up more time in class to get to some other activities. Here's an example of a podcast that a student is expected to view outside of class before coming to class. Okay, here I have two variables in the last to solve this system by graphing. In order to graph this graph it, I must first put them both into slope intercept form. The nice one is and again slope intercept form is y equals m x plus b. My first linear equation is already in slope intercept form. However, my second one is not. So I must put that into slope intercept form. Now again, I'll need to isolate my y, so I'm going to add equal and opposite operation, add the 17x to both sides. I'm going to do one side and do the other side. So I'm left with a 10y equals a 17x plus 4. And now again, I haven't totally isolated my y, so I need to finish it out by dividing it out by 10. Whatever I do to one side, i got to do everything on the other side. So I'm left with y equals 1.7x. 0.4. Now I am in slope intercept form, and I am now ready to solve this equation by graphing. So in order to do that, I need to first draw up my calculator. So once I bring up my calculator, I need to first go to my y equals menu. So I hit the y equals. I'm going to plot in my first line, which is 4.1x plus 5.2. And now for my second y, I'm going to use the equation that I solved for y, and that is 7x plus 0 0.4. So now I have my two linear equations, and then I'm going to hit my graph key, and I'm going to take a look at the picture. I'm in the zoom standard window, and you can see I'm really interested in the intersection of these two lines, and that intersection is located somewhere there. And to get the exact value of that location, I'm going to hit my second trace key, and I'm going to go down to option number 5, which is my intersect option. And then ask me, if is that the first curve I want to identify? And I say yes, so I'm going to hit enter. Ask me if that's the second line I'm interested in. I'm yes. And guess, so I'm going to hit enter one more time, and it'll take me right to the point of the intersection, which is negative 2, negative 3. And if you follow along here on the right-hand side, all my keystrokes that I use, when I plug it in for my calculator to find out that second trace. So my answer for this, uh, solving the system of linear equations, is simply... That's the intersection, that's where this x and y value makes the first line true as well as the second line, and that is indeed their intersection. So that is an example of, of, an, of a lesson that we would normally do in class, but I can, through the use of technology, we can make a podcast, record it, and my students can view it outside of class so they're prepared to go. So when we do come to class, we can get a little bit more in-depth about the topic. So essentially what it does, the flipped classroom allows you to free up more time to get to some of the subjects you never get to. So how do you use a flip classroom? Simply create a podcast, upload it, either put it in the Blackboard site or a YouTube channel, have your students view it outside of class before coming to class, and then th through that, you can come to class and you get to some more in-depth concepts. One platform that we also can use is Google+. Google+, Plus is simply nothing more than a free platform and it's an extension of Google. It's a multimedia social network. The advantage of Google Plus is it has some technology embedded in it that really facilitates the ability to, to use uh, interactive interact with, with your students and student to student and also teacher to student. All is needed is a Gmail account because it's free. An example of what the Google Plus page looks like, here is what it has here is this essentially has replaced our discussion board and what we use, used to use as Blackboard. Where the students can interact, they can hang out with one another or they can hang out with the professor. Essentially, a hangout is nothing more than a video chat face-to-face -face with up to 10 people at the same time. 
So that's the advantage of Google Plus. And the other advantage is, especially with math, with the discussion board, students can upload their home, their work and share with one another. Here, a student took a photo with her with her phone of the work that their homework, and asked another student and said, "Hey, is, this is my answer. This is what I got. Can you can you help me along? I'm a little stuck along the way." Well, as you know, with math, it's very difficult to type that in if you're doing it with text. So with the photo and upload on Google+, Plus, not only are, is he sharing with other students, you can also share it with the professor. And you can see this key over here. You can also start a hangout. That's nothing more than a video chat. So the options are endless. And again, this is a free access, free source. So why do you want to use a flipped classroom? What it comes down to is it facilitates student learning. And enables us to get to more hands-on activities. That's the biggest thing is it frees up more class time so you can get to some of those projects that you never got to. You can get to those learning experiences that are hands-on or in-depth critical thinking questions that you were never able to get to. So that is one of the biggest advantages. The other thing we utilize using the flip uh, classroom is this vector hour. A vector hour is something that we came up here with uh, it is a math it's nothing more than virtual engagement using computer technologies online and in real time and we figured out that there are we we soon found that there's really three categories of these vectors the first one is what we like to refer to as a vector lecture a vector lecture is exactly what it sounds like it is a lecture with students online what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first find I'm gonna first find my derivative I'm gonna find my derivative Obviously, that gives me my 3x minus 18x minus 48. I'm going to find my derivative. Now, like you said, uh, I'm going to find my derivative. I'm actually going to set my derivative equal to 0 at these values. Why does that make sense? Because remember when I did my graph, the peaks and the valleys, the peaks and the valleys are where my max and mins happen. And at those peaks and valleys, my derivative is 0. My derivative has a value of 0, so that's why I'm going to find out those all that good stuff. So, uh, I'm going to set that value to zero. I see it. So what this ends up happening is, is a live lecture with these students online. We're meeting through a Google Plus Hangout. They can ask questions. They can interject. They can either use a, type, a chat box to type their questions or just chime in with a mic and ask questions. But essentially, this is something that I would normally do in class, a lecture I would do in class, but I'm doing it online. The advantage of doing it online is not only can I hit more students, but it's also recorded and I can stream it live so other students can view it. So these students here can interact live, other students can view it passive or without interaction over the internet, and these also it's recorded so they can go back to it at any time and uh, and gain insight on it. So those are the advantages of doing a, uh, a vector lecture. And uh, like I said, it'd be nothing more than this is, it could be done for a face to face class or even for a uh, for an online class. Local max. Local. So that. Advantage again is by doing this, using this, using the flipped classroom, you're able to get to more creative and evaluating some of the Bloom Taxonomy's higher level learning you can get to in class. And that's where our, st our students struggle the most is with that higher learning, the higher part of that pyramid. So we're able to accomplish this by guiding them through that in class more. Then we can have what we call vector lessons. Vector lessons is nothing more than a lesson that's pre-recorded without any students. X. 
axis and looking to the X. I will show you the long, the long way. First, to show you where this derived from. We talked about before E being a known number, so this is, this is nothing more than A to the X. It just so happens to be an E value. Remember, if I use that rule over right here, that would tell me that I need to take, in this case, my A value would be E. So this would be LN of E times E to the X. And believe it or not, LN of E has a value of 1, which you will be comfortable with that 1. So in reality, yes, it just simply comes out to be E to the X. But I wanted to show you the long way that LN of E is there, but it always equates to 1. So that's why the shortcut rule is E to the X. But what I really want to show you now is uh, incorporate. So that's an example of a vector lesson. So again, there's no student interaction. It's interaction is something that is pre-recorded. You can do this if you miss a day because of snow day or or hurricane like we had here in the Northeast. You can you can have this ahead of time so students can go back and view before they can review it before a test. But its advantage is essentially it's, it's a lesson. It's a lesson. It's, it's one target and short. So flip versus traditional flip classrooms. You're using everything that you would use in the traditional. You still have the lecture. The only difference is the lecture is, re is recorded and it's put up through a video or a podcast online. And the advantage, again, is the fact that now when they come to class, you're not spending as much time lecturing. You get to, you have more time to do some of the hands-on activities and some deeper conceptual understanding of the material. And you can also have a vector office hour, and this is nothing more like you would have a face-to-face -face office hour, but it happens through the Google Plus platform. Here's an example of that. So that's an example of an office hour between a student and a professor that can happen through Google+. So why do we use sessions and flip, why do we use vector sessions in the flip classroom? Well, we believe it's student-centered, it's flexible, it's user-friendly, easy, and it's productive. And we truly believe it is a new paradigm and it is the way of the future because it incorporates some of the good stuff of the old and some of the new stuff. If you like additional information, please feel free to contact us at these above emails listed above, or you can use a QR scanner and, and scan the QR code there, which will take us to your, our YouTube channel, which is IsoMath. has a lot of examples of these podcasts that we are using. We thank you for your time and look forward to seeing you again in the future.